Well, it's such a pleasure for me to be able to welcome the Shikukuas here. So first of all, Anne and Martin, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate that so much. I remember when Pastor Randy called me, how long ago was that? And you said, I got this email from this guy who said he's from Glory Baptist Church in Africa. <laughs> and we said, I said, oh, is that... It's not Ethiopia, is it? (laughs) Because as you know, we get a lot of spam that comes out of Ethiopia. And he said, no, I think this guy is legit. And so he emailed him back and back and forth. And that was our initial um, introduction to Pastor Martin. And then he came to one of our conferences um, that year or the next year. And we have enjoyed our relationship with them for all of these years since then. And we were, I was absolutely blown away when I got a message from Martin earlier this year that said, I would love to come to your conference this year, and I want to bring Anne with me. And I thought, oh, wow, now that's going to be quite a conference if we can pull that off. And, of course, God was so gracious in provision for their trip, um, their their tickets, getting everything all arranged. And <clears throat> so here they are this morning. Now, he is going to present his ministry, so I don't need to say too much about it, except to say that I think we have all been blessed for being a part of the ministry in Eldoret. There's an orphanage, there's a school, um, and of course, Glory Baptist Church there as well. And so, uh, you know, we just, again, thank you so much for coming. And um, I'm just going to have, Pastor Martin, would you just come on up here now and we'll, we'll just have you turn the service over to you. Thank you so much, my sister Ruth. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, it is now a quarter to, to seven in the evening at home. And so it is good to be in another world whereby it is a morning now. I bless the name of the Lord for that. Yes, I come from Eldoret, Kenya, in East Africa. Uh, that is where I serve the Lord. I remember I was born in... Uh, a family that was going to the church, an Anglican church, and uh, our grandfather was very strong. He said the home must remain an Anglican home. And so when our parents came up, they were fully in Anglican, and they also said their children have to be there. And so we were the children. And I remember we used to go there, but there was no relationship with the Lord. One morning, I had just finished uh, the primary education, waiting to join high school, is when uh, a preacher came. We were just in a soccer pitch in the morning. And a preacher came in, and uh, he introduced us to the word of the Lord. I remember him opening First Samuel 3, 19 and 20, and uh, he read that word to us. And uh, it was about the God of Samuel, who never leaves his people. And he talked about how other people can leave us and forsake us. Friends, parents, and all people. But this God of Samuel never. When he asked, who wants this God who will never leave his people? We were about 11 of us seated right in the grass. And I said, I want this God who never leaves his people. I did not know that the very moment you ask Jesus to come into your life, he comes. I assure you, he brought change. And whenever I stand today, I talk about God who is faithful, who never leaves his people, and who never forsakes his people. I was brought up with a grandmother, and uh, I am one person who never saw his father. The la- when I was told that this is your father, he was in a coffin. And so uh, I was just brought up in a humble life, and... Uh, My grandmother knows all about me, and so whenever I see children, I don't want to see children passing in problems like the ones I went through. And together with Anne, that is why we are doing what we are doing in Eldoret, touching the lives of children. When Pastor Randy and this church came in 2011, only 15, and the number has been growing up. Through your support of prayer, your support, I want, and I want to say thank you so much. 
all that you've seen there, everything is just new. We make progress nearly after every two, three months. We make a step. And now we are talking of serving over 150 children to 200. We have uh, 11, 9 who are totally dependent on us, total orphans. Uh, you've seen the young boy there who has been helped. He was almost dying out of uh, hunger, malnutrition, and uh, sickness. But Anne has been working on her feet. I tell you, if you see that boy today, you will just celebrate. Because the boy is totally changed. Thank you, Ruth. That one is just not working. Sure. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about this. Thank you so much, Ruth. I am used to holding this one. This one was very new for me. <laughs> but I thank God now I can do something. This is how I do it. And I want to say thank you so much, Pastor Randy, for introducing me to our people in the States. We love you and we do pray for you. And uh, one of the reasons as why I said I have to come is that we welcome you to Glory Baptist Church in Eldoret again. Even if it is this year, we are ready for you. But we'll be praying to see what God will do. So we are doing the ministry of children. We have the Bible school, uh, raising up the pastors and equipping them to do ministry, planting other churches. We have seven churches now, just planted around the Glory Baptist Church that is 21 years old. And uh, the Lord is blessing us. We have decided to stand strong, faithful, and committed to the Lord. Uh, another thing I just wanted to express is that anything that comes on our way in financial support, whether prayers, it makes a difference. And so I stand here on behalf of our ministry back in Africa to say thank you so much. Several challenges are there, especially the challenge number one is taking care of uh, those children. As per now, we thank God. We started and we did not know what is exactly to be done. But now we, we have seen that uh, we can take care of each child at 50, uh, that is 500 Kenya shillings, which is $50 per child per month. We can serve one child and we thank God for that. Uh, the challenge of teachers, the Lord is helping us. It hasn't been easy because of uh, taking care of teachers and meeting their needs. But now we bless the name of the Lord with your support and prayers. We can at least find ourselves having 200, uh, that is 200 US dollars per month, and it helps the teacher to be supported, appreciated, and continue serving our children. And so let me just share God's word from uh, the theme of this missions conference. Uh, the way our sister Ruth shared with me from Exodus 17. And I was reading through this book and I saw that for sure ours is the role of encouragement. And I just stand before this congregation to stand as an encouragement to you. Just the way you have encouraged us. And for sure that is the role we are called into to encourage one another. And we can do this. As I was reading this, I realized that Israel, uh, the Israelites, had just crossed the Red Sea with the victory of God. Though they had started complaining about lack of water in Mara and, and Moses hit the rock and the water came out of it. Uh, and then they, the story talks about when Moses was ready to fight the Amalekites. And so he was to go and fight them. They were standing before him, and something was passing through my studies when I was thinking about the Amalekites. And I remembered Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, when God called Joshua and told Joshua, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, for I, the Lord, has called you, and I will be with you wherever you go. 
And so it made me to think about the enemies that stood, that they were standing before the children of God, the Israelites. And I saw the Egyptians, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the, Hiv- the, the Hivites, and even the Jebusites, who are great enemies to the children of God. But one thing I was realizing was that out of all these enemies, God stood as an encourager to his children. And so we stand here encouraged. This morning, as we were at Pastor Randy, we looked outside the house and we were like, is this how the American rain rains? What is happening outside there? And he told us, no, this is not rain. This is the snow. And we were like, okay. I've never seen this. I need to see it. And we really enjoy to see that. I don't want to see that kind of coldness, but what do I do? It has happened when we are here. (laughs) And it was really funny for us and Anne. We have never seen something like that. When it is raining, we see rain. We don't see such like big things coming down like butterflies. (laughs) And so we were like, American rain is like butterfly. <laughs> ah, but <laughs> only to realize it is what you call snow. So it is, we are encouraged. It is not easy sometimes to be there. Why am I saying and standing with this theme of Exodus 17? And especially if we look in verse 12. My Bible says, the King James says, but Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and her stayed up his hands. The one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Let me tell you, this blesses my heart. Why is it a blessing to all of us? The first thing is that uh, it is encouraging because... Uh, God has encouraged us. We need to encourage other people because God has encouraged us already. Even us from Africa, we are encouraged. Life there is totally different compared to what we see here. And when I was, when I purposed to come this year, we came and what was in our heart is to be also an encouragement to you. Because even in those difficulties, for us, we don't eat all the times. When you eat something like the breakfast we ate at Pastor that is enough for, the, for us the whole day. The issue of eating in the morning, even at uh, lunchtime, even, it's not there. You eat a small meal and you wait until tomorrow. Those children you've been seeing there, when they get something from us in the school, and in that orphanage, yeah, uh, during lunchtime, that is what they stay on until the other day. And so for us, that is the life. But let me tell you, despite all those challenges, we are encouraged. And so as a result of that, just the way uh, Aaron and her stood to make sure that when they hold the hands of Moses, they overcome the battle. We celebrate that even in those difficult situations, we are encouraged by the Lord. Psalms 124, if you read verse 1 to 8, it is clear. My Bible says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quickly. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us. I thank God for verse 6 that says, Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. There are so many enemies that surround us, sicknesses, illness, difficulties. But we bless the name of the Lord as Christians. The Lord is on our side. Verse 7 said, Our soul is escaped as a bird. Out of the snare of the flowers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and the earth. I remember this morning with my sister Cheryl. We were saying, who is this? She told me something. 
that those balls of snow, each one is different. Something like that. And it was like, all this, they, each one is different. And he said, yeah, it is different. And we can prove that. How comes that it can be all that way? And pastor added, it is just like our fingerprints. All of us, our fingerprints. More than 6.8 billion people in the world. Fingerprints are different. And we said, if that is how God works, there is God. And so we thank God. We are encouraged in the name of the Lord. So brethren, God has encouraged us. No matter what happens. And as a result of that, we have to encourage. Why should we be an encouragement also? We need to be an encouragement because we all need encouragement. I've realized this. I know even in America, in one way or another, America needs to be encouraged. I remember last year when you were going through political whatever and all that. Yes, I was watching America closely. And I realized America needs encouragement. And let me tell you, I was one of the people with our church who are praying for your country that will go through that uh, political transition well. Remember to pray for us. We are in the same now in Kenya. And things are not going well politically. Every person wants to, to be a political leader. And so the way we prayed for you, pray for us also. All of us need encouragement encouragement is needed to all of us and all of us in one way or another should learn to encourage one another as families in our workplace as churches glory baptist church in econ you've encouraged us in eldoret in africa you are very far from us but let me tell you we have always felt your love down there and so, thank you for being an encouragement to us. People are suffering in their lives, in their sicknesses. People who have not given their lives to Jesus. Part of what we were showing up here, our church does also open-air preaching. Something that was very funny to me the very first time I came to America in 2009, I was like, I'm not seeing people. Where are people? Because for us, we are used to passing around. People are everywhere. And it's when pastor told me, when you see cars, when cars are parked somewhere, and there is a building, people are inside that building. For us, it is not that way. People are walking, they are running, they are doing things everywhere. People are all over. And so, we have an advantage of I can come out like in a church like this one. I stand up there. I put up a stand. I share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I welcome people to the Lord. And they will come. That is part of what we do a lot in our country. In fact, keep us in prayers because the instruments, the public address instruments we've been using for more than now seven years, it is like they are all finished. And so sometimes it is now giving us a headache. Pray for us that God will provide good public address system because in Africa we can still preach the gospel at any time, anywhere, and people will be invited to Jesus and come to the Lord. I thank God for such a missions conference that this is an opportunity for us to share Jesus and bring people to the Lord. We have people who are unsaved, people who are hungry, displaced, you come to uh, our country, you will see people who are totally displaced from their families, they are displaced from their homes because of uh, several challenges. We have what we call sometimes tribalism, whereby another tribe can just stand against another tribe, and that one forces another tribe to move where they don't know. And as a result of that, it is us to bring encouragement. There are two girls who stood here on the, on the chart. I remember when we brought those children eight years ago. They were very small, totally hopeless. They didn't know where to go, what to do. And this year, I thank the Lord that we can see them now, their first year in high school. And to me, when I see that with Anne, we thank the Lord. Because we know when they finish their high school education, 
Actually, when they go back where they came from, people do not go to school. Total 100% illiteracy. With high school education, when they go back, those are the people who will be the teachers down there. They are the people who will be taking care of other people. And so, when we do such like thing for us, we feel totally encouraged. That through those lives, after like 15 years or 12 years, we have changed lives. And they can go back and change their people. We bless the name of the Lord. There is what we can do to encourage people. And finally, I want all of us to know that we can encourage people. Each and every person can encourage someone. You can. Through what we do, through what we say, we can encourage. Why? Encouraging is a ministry. And is a ministry from the Lord. It is either we choose to be encouragers or not to be encouragers. But the Lord has entrusted all of us with a ministry of encouragement. A person like me, I can't even tell how I can be an encouragement to a person. But I've had people telling me, Pastor, you have encouraged me in one way or another. You've helped me to realize my potential. And so I'm here to challenge all of us that we have a ministry as Christians of encouragement. And we should not neglect this. When we read from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, and I just want us to turn if we have our Bibles, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, my Bible says, verse 3, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Another version will call it encouragement. Verse 4, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Praise be to God. We can encourage a person. Why? We have been encouraged by the Lord himself. And having been encouraged, we can also encourage people. Let us choose to be an encourager, and God will bless our lives. And so, I thank God that today, despite of the lives we went through, despite the difficulties and challenges of life, despite of all that come on our way, we can also be an encouragement to a person. So, we are called to encourage one another, and we can encourage by choosing to encourage uh, one another. Because, number one, God has encouraged us. It is true, even through the salvation. The salvation we have is a gift from the Lord himself. God came for us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. God demonstrates his own love towards us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He came to encourage us in our sinful state. And secondly, we all need encouragement. So, brethren, as we walk around, remember, we all need encouragement. And finally, we can encourage. Nothing should stop us from encouraging one another. With those remarks, I want to say God bless you. We love you. Uh, we do pray for you whenever we are where we are. And I want to believe you always pray for us and we'll remain together as glory Baptist in the States and even in Kenya. This morning, my church elder told us to pass my love to you and greet you and they welcome you to Kenya. God bless you so much.